the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, I would like to welcome you to the 30th day of this conference, Destroy the Destroyer. So you go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 to 19 and now Paul is telling us, Know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. St. Paul is talking to you. The voice of St. Paul is being used by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is speaking through his voice and he's saying, no, that you, listening to me, you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. And then he will go on to say in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, In him we have redemption through his blood. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And then John will appear in Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, And the Spirit of the Lord will speak through John, saying, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe, from every language, from every people, and from every nation. My dear friends, listen. Every time you say the blood of Jesus with faith and understanding, every time you use the blood of Jesus or you invoke it with faith and understanding, what you are saying is that whatever will stop you from entering this or whatever is preventing you from entering this or that, let the life of God give you access to step in. That is what it means to invoke the blood of Jesus with faith and understanding. That the life of God, the very life of God should give you access. So if, for instance, the so-called traditional rulers in your village, they have been sacrificing since before you were born and they believe that they can prevent you with the lower levels of blood that they offer. And remember, it is a principle. The lower levels of blood they offer can actually prevent you if you are neutral. But if you understand the precious blood that was poured for you, you are free and you can nullify and prevent whatever they try. You, you can walk away. If you don't have this understanding, you can shout blood of Jesus and you will still remain in captivity like most of you are because there is no knowledge, there is no faith, and there is no understanding. That is why God brings up conferences like this to teach us and to empower us. Or else, because there is no revelation or you don't know how to activate that which Christ has done for you, you would always be in bondage. And that's the story of most of us. We are, we are in bondage because we don't have the understanding of the blood of Jesus. Listen up, listen up, listen up. Now, victory has been won. Satan has been crushed, but he's not down. Victory has been won. Satan has been crushed, but he is not down. Take notes. He is even more angry. He is a wounded lion for that matter, looking for someone to devour. If you give him a chance, he will not spare you. The ministry of the thief has been amplified to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The ministry of the wolf, super amplified, dressed like a sheep to devour you. So Paul saw this in a revelation. That's why he wrote in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be well balanced. In other words, be temperate and sober of mind. Be vigilant and be cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams like a lion in a fierce, hungrily manner, seeking someone to seize upon and to devour. And mind you, this particular text was written after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. After the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 5, 8, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking through Paul that you listening to me, be well balanced, be temperate and sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times because that enemy of yours, the devil, is roaming around like a lion in a fierce, hungrily manner. And if you allow yourself, he will, he will, he will finish you. That is why we need a daily relationship with God, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That is why we need to take our spiritual growth seriously because now the devil doesn't waste time. Once he gets you, he will devour you. The ministry of the wolf. And Satan is even more dangerous now and more angry. And the only way he fails to act is to target you and I. 
So even though it is true that Jesus has done the crushing, it is not automatic for you because of the mystery of the free will. That is why it is not automatic. The mystery of the free will. Maybe one of these days we should run a conference on the mystery of the free will. God will not step into your space unless you invite him. It's a spiritual law. He created us free agents. If you observe, when Jesus walked the face of the earth, he never healed people without their permission. Blind Bartimaeus, I always use that example. You appear and Jesus was asking, what do you want me to do for you? So you must sustain a relationship to walk in that power. You must, you must give your will to God. And once your will has been aligned to God's will, anything that is fighting you is fighting the will of God. And there is nothing that can fight the will of God and win. So scripture will say in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12b, Keep on working with fear and trembling to complete your salvation. So the salvation has already been finished, but you have a part to play because of the mystery of free will. So keep on working with fear and trembling to complete your salvation. And that is what we've been trying to do here. Doing spiritual capacity building and sharing of this behind the scenes revelations because knowledge is power and understanding is key. And the knowledge of God through Jesus Christ can bring, bring you grace and peace. The knowledge of God through Jesus Christ can bring you grace and peace. And the devil is counting on our ignorance of the issues to inflict more harm on us. So as we gradually round up this conference, the question now pops up. How is Satan attacking the woman and her offspring? Because don't forget, we are, we are told that the guy is now very angry. He is roaming around like a lion, seeking someone to devour. So what are the tools that he is using? What are the new methods that the kingdom of darkness is employing to that effect? Number one. They are dressed like sheep, but they are wolves on the inside to so be on the lookout. They are dressed like sheep, but they are wolves on the inside to lure unsuspecting victims. So don't just take things on face value. Even iodated salt looks like sugar from afar till you taste it. So the ministry of the wolf and the thief have been amplified. Look, spiritual laws are very defined and Satan knows that. He also knows that the spirit of humans unassisted by the Holy Spirit cannot handle tensions for long. So he will make sure that you don't take your spiritual growth seriously. Less prayer, less reading of the word. He will make you intellectualize and rationalize everything. He will introduce problems and challenges into your life. And in a bit to solve them, you will go to places that look like churches but are evil shrines in the realms. And once you step at the places of this false prophet, God will turn his face against you. Like he said in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. In fact, you will be plundered and looted from all fronts. So beware of these magicians, these evil spiritualists, these fetish priests and priestesses who are now hiding under the cover of Christianity to inflict harm on the body of Christ. Beware of them. And remember, life is essentially spiritual. That is the key to progress and development, healing, breakthroughs as far as our work in these dimensions is concerned. How is the kingdom of darkness employing to defeat and to destroy us. Number two, flowing from the Genesis event and pro from prophecy, flowing from the Genesis event and from prophecy, in your territory now, as I speak to you, as you listen to the to the to the to the Holy Spirit speaking through my voice, there are people who look like you, they talk like you, they walk like you, they eat like you, they are in your family, they are at your workplace, they are in your neighborhood, but they are not human spirits in the spiritual realms. They are not. They are not human spirits. They look like us, but they are not part of us. Their mission is simple, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You see, eh, a thing in the physical must have the same connotation spiritually. If a thing is one thing physically and another spiritually, then it needs to be investigated to see if it is of God or of Satan. Now, evil can present itself as light. I hope you know that. And you should know that the devil can present himself as light and just like the way satan cannot receive salvation these descendants or offspring of satan cannot receive salvation they look like you they talk like you they dress like you they church like you but their father is the devil and their job description is just to bite your heel steal from you and destroy you these species do not have the word mercy in their dictionary they will finish you they will destroy you they will steal your time they will take from you they will wreck your family they will bring down your business they will collapse your marriage they will destroy your children and they will turn everything else against you so there is something about this serpent and its offspring it is warfare and they will continue to develop plans until we arise until we the bearers of light arise we need to arise and walk in the power of the resurrection and join hands in crushing every head of any offspring of the serpent so are you ready to rise?
the power to crash is available all you need to do is to tap into it for our prayer intentions today we use Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 which says that be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you so continue to pray for your personal prayer intentions as the music ministers minister in the background
Let's pray. Dear Lord, your word says in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 that we should be strong and courageous. We should not be afraid or terrified of anything because you go with us, you never leave us, and you never forsake us. Lord, this is your word. And you are always faithful and you are covenant keeping God. We pray for strength, we pray for courage. We pray that you take away from our hearts and our lives the spirit of fear. And we pray that you go before us. And we pray that you always abide with us and do not forsake us. We are present our various intentions before you. We pray that you send your spirit and bring answers to our prayers. We pray that your spirit will continue to lead us and go before us. Eternal God in whom mercy is endless and the treasure of compassion inexhaustible, we ask you to look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, have a prayerful day. Shalom. And God bless you. Mm-hmm.